I believe Optimus is going to be the greatest product ever created by humanity. Elon Musk and his XAI startup have built the largest and most powerful artificial intelligence training supercomputer in the world. As far as I know, there's only one person in the world who could do that, you know? This is an arms race of epic proportions. He's a big thinker. You guys went on Fox the other day with the Doge team. You I saw agree. Elon's face nodding while they were speaking with a grin ear to ear. Right. He was proud. He is and proud. XAI has acquired X in an all-stock transaction. Tesla's first robo-taxis are officially on the road. The company's board proposed a new compensation package for the CEO that could pay him just about a trillion dollars in stock. He gets nothing if he doesn't hit the numbers. SpaceX will buy wireless spectrum licenses from EchoStar for its Starlink satellite network for about $17 billion. Three. How do you have time? This I, I, I never understand you. Yeah, well, I do work a lot. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Elon Musk. All right. Yeah. I'm, at, I'm at Tesla uh, Global Engineering Headquarters in Palo Alto. Yeah. So no more Washington, D.C. You're back at work. You're focused. Yeah? Uh, yeah, I haven't been to D.C. since May. Okay. Uh, yeah, that, was a, that was a hell of a side quest. <laughs> that was a good side. Any lessons from your time in Washington, D.C.? Uh, the government is basically unfixable. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're finalizing the design of Optimus version 3. And uh, that, that really is going to be a very remarkable robot. Um, it will have the, essentially the manual dexterity of a human, so meaning a very complex hand. Um, a, the, a, an AI mind that can navigate and comprehend reality. Um, and it will be made in very high volume. Uh, those are the three things that are missing. Like if you see any other um, robotics uh, company, they're missing those three things. Those are the three really hard things. Um, in manufacturing education really and truly is uh, remarkable and I'm very very happy that and uh, I, I, I spend actually at this point um, It, it might be more of my mental cycles than anything, anything else, any other single thing on Optimus. Uh, that's, that, that's solving for uh, real-world AI, uh, all of the electromechanical issues of Optimus, the, the supply chain and production challenges of it, because we have, there is no supply chain that exists for humanoid robots. So it has to be, we have to recreate it from scratch, um, and which requires doing a lot of vertical integration. Um, n none of the actuators in Optimus um, are available from an existing supply chain. Um, so, but I, I think it is accurate to say that if successful, Optimus will be the biggest product ever. I think that the, the marginal cost of production, once you hit a million units per year, uh, is probably around the $20,000 range. Uh, it, it, it sort of depends on how much you spend on the AI chip in the, in the uh, robot. Um, and you need to achieve a lot of efficiencies in the actuators. Uh, there are um, 26 actuators per arm like 26 electric, like motors, gearboxes, and power electronics. Um, 
so so but the 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 the, the AI chip will be pretty expensive. Like that that might be like five five or six thousand dollars of the of the bill of materials, maybe more. Um, and um, the price will be as a function of demand. Well, it turns out the human hands are incredibly, they've evolved to, this, to be this incredibly sophisticated machine. Like the, your hand is an, 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 actually a remarkable thing. It's, look, look closely at your hands. <laughs> and, and think of all the things you can do with your hands, which is a lot. <laughs> I can think um, of many things. <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking about something. <laughs> you know, your, your hand's a very versatile instrument. Yeah. You could um, give a high five. <laughs> Very versatile. Um, you know, you, you, you can swing a baseball bat. You can uh, thread needles. You, you can you put thread in a needle. Uh, you can play the piano with violin. Um, you know, you could disassemble or assemble a car. It turns out humans evolved to this, the shape and capabilities that we, we, we have um, it, it, for, for good reasons. Uh, it, it actually is that there, there is a, you know, like this value to having five, you know, four fingers and a thumb. Um, and e even the pinky actually is, is quite useful. Um, it, toes are a much more a question mark, but, but, but the fingers, <laughs> <laughs> we, we could not actually buy the actuators for any amount of money. They simply didn't exist, even though there are, I don't know, 10, 20,000 electric motors out there for us sizes and shapes. Um, we've had to design uh, every electric motor, gearbox, um, and, if, and the controlling electronics from scratch, basically from physics first principles. Yeah. Well, the um, good news and, is uh, you've got a lot of experience with factories over the last couple of decades. So yeah. how challenging is this versus Cybertruck, Model Y, Model X. Gigafactory, you know, Starship? Yes. Well, harder than Starship? Or, no, not hard. <laughs> Starship's harder. <laughs> okay. Okay. So somewhere between uh, a Model X and a Starship. <laughs> yeah. At, at Tesla, we basically had two different chip programs. One dojo and one uh, do dojo on the training side, and then what we call, you know, AI for it's just our inference chip. Um, uh, the, the AI force is currently shipping in all vehicles, um, and we're finalize, finalizing the design of AI five, which will be an immense jump from AI four. Um, by some metrics, the improvement in AI five will be forty times better than AI four. Wow! So forty percent, forty times. Um, and and uh, this is because we work so closely at a very fine grained level on the AI software and the AI hardware. So we know exactly where the limiting factors are. And, and, um, and so effectively, the AI hardware and software teams are co-designing the chip. Um, so there's a bunch of sort of technical stuff that AI5 will do a lot better. Um, in terms of, of nominal sort of uh, raw compute, it's, it's eight times more compute, um, about nine times more memory, uh, roughly five times more memory bandwidth. Um, so, uh, but because we're addressing some core limitations in AI4, you multiply that by that, that 8x compute improvement by another 5x improvement because of, of uh, optimization at a, at a, at a very fine-grained silicon level of things that are currently suboptimal in AI4. That's where you get the 40x improvement. So version 14 will be the biggest uh, upgrade in Tesla software since version 12. Um, we are increasing the uh, parameter count by an order of magnitude. I saw in the trades that you spent about $17 billion on some spectrum and oh, yeah. that... Um, <laughs> Yeah, um, so some couch change um, to enable 
your satellites and the Starlink network to connect directly with phones. Unless we have some, unless we have some very major setbacks, uh, SpaceX will demonstrate uh, full reusability next year, uh, catching both the booster and the ship, um, and being able to deliver over 100 tons to a useful orbit. I mean, it's, it's, creating a fully reusable orbital rocket is one of the hottest engineering problems ever. It's certainly, you know, a candidate for most difficult engineering project ever. You know, it's on the podium at least. Um, so it's a that, that that's been the goal of SpaceX from the beginning, from 2002, um, and here we are, 23 years later. So it's it's a long journey. I started SpaceX because is an extremely important goal is becoming a space-faring civilization, ultimately uh, becoming a multi-planetary species. Um, and if we're not on that on that path, then we, we, we really need to get on that path. The, the, the really big breakthrough that's needed, the fundamental invention. Uh, that is needed to um, make life multi-planetary is a, a, a fully reusable uh, orbital, orbit class rocket system. And um, with, with a, a super talent, like by far the, I think the most talented group of rocket engineers that's ever been assembled. Um, and, uh, and we're finally, next year, I think we'll be able to achieve full reusability. I think, I think there's a natural logarithmic function associated with the amount of compute. So uh, then, like, say for argument's sake, like, 10x more compute will double the intelligence. Maybe that's, that, that might be a rough rule of thumb. Uh, but, you know, that still means that, you know, you go from 100 IQ to 200 IQ. It's still a pretty, pretty big deal. Um, so I... Uh, and, and I, th I think we'll see intelligence continue to scale all the way up to where, you know, most of the power of the sun is harnessed for compute and then ultimately most of the power of the galaxy. You know, sort of Kardashev 2, Kardashev 3 scale uh, compute. Um, So I guess once you think of artificial intelligence not as sort of this, you know, a destination that you reach, but really uh, as part of the overall escalation of intelligence um, that 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 we are are aware of, um, I, th I I think that we might have AI smarter than any single human at anything as soon as next year. Wow. Um, and, 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 then, and then probably within five, like say 2030, probably AI is smarter than the sum of all humans. I, I, I mean, I, I hope the birth rates turn around. I'm a, I'm a big proponent of uh, increased birth rate, uh, obviously. Uh, <laughs> Well, are you doing anything example. about it, or no? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to set a good example. <laughs> you know, I mean, for me, it's a philosophy of curiosity. I'm curious about the nature of the universe, and I want to go out there, and I, I want humanity to be out there exploring the stars, um, uh, maybe meeting alien civilizations. Uh, I, 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 hope, I hope more people can get behind a philosophy of curiosity, because I think it's very exciting yeah. um, and, 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 and inherently optimistic. Um, you, you, like, you, because there's, there's this ama amazing sense of wonder about the nature of the universe. Yeah. And when you, just, when you uncover some secrets of the universe, that's amazing. You, and you're like, a whole world of understanding has opened up. I mean, we, we, we used to not even know where all the continents were. Um, you know, it used to be like, just the map would be, there'd be dragons. 
<laughs> like all we know is that when they sailed in that direction, they didn't come back. <laughs> I mean, the moon base. <laughs> that's all. That's all they knew. <laughs> I want to just emphasize again that that's it's more important than the form of governance on Mars or who's there in the early days. What really matters is that Mars um, is self-sustaining, that we are truly a multi-planet species and so, such that we've achieved planetary redundancy. So that, that if, if something, and, I, and I obviously we should, we should do everything possible to make sure life on Earth is great, but there's always some risk that of an annihilation event on Earth. Yeah. Um, like I said, self-annihilation or some natural disaster. Um, and, uh, and so the, the probable lifespan of consciousness increases dramatically as soon as, uh, as soon as we are multi-planet species with the key test being, can Mars survive if the resupply ships stop coming? So, so, it, so getting, like the first missions to Mars are not that important. The, what matters is, can you get sufficient tonnage, tonnage to Mars such that Mars can uh, prosper on its own? Um, and that means it has to have all of the ingredients of civilization. It, it, it's not just that you need to build, for example, a chip factory on Mars or chip fab on Mars, but you, you need the ability, ability to build too. chip fabs. Um, I think it can be done in, in 30 years. Um, wow. So if, if provided there's an exponential increase in the, in the tonnage to Mars with each successive Mars transfer window, which is every two years. So every two years, the, the planets align and you can, you can transfer to Mars. Um, so uh, I think in roughly 15, but maybe as few as 10, but 10 to 15-ish, uh, Mars transfer windows, if you're um, seeing exponential increases in the tonnage to Mars with each Mars transfer window, then it should be possible to make Mars self-sustaining um, in, in about, call it roughly 25 years. Amazing. That's incredible. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Elon Musk. <laughs>